Chip Tam and football. That's what Pittsburgh does. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the show. Brian Batka with you from the Post Gazette, one of our Steelers beat writers. And pleased to be joined today by Rob King, the new voice of the Steelers on the Steeler Audio Network play by play man, fresh off of his regular season debut. Thanks for joining us, Rob. How are you? Uh, doing well, Brian. Thanks for having me. For sure. And as always, this show brought to you by Pella. No better place to get new windows and doors installed in your home than Pella. They can help you save on energy costs year round. Schedule a free in-home consultation with your local Pella windows and doors to find the right product for your home and your budget. Give them a call at 866-593-1560 to discuss that project further. That's 866-593-1560 to get started on your new windows and doors installation with Pella Windows and Doors of Pittsburgh. Why, Rob, first things first. How did the maiden voyage go? Because obviously you had a few preseason games on the mic, but now it all counts. Every play, every point, and you you did get a little bit of a a layup right off the bat when the Falcons made Ruka Row Row inactive. So they, they gave you a little <laughs> solid right right from the jump. A row row row. Yeah, I was ready with that one, uh, <laughs> but uh, he he didn't play. You know, I, I think the fact uh, Brian that I did four games for Bill filling in a few years ago. And had the whole preseason um, to kind of get reacclimated to it. Uh, for me personally, helped it. Uh, I think helped me be co- more comfortable with the process and what's going on. And then you know having Max there from the jump, you know he does the TV, then comes over. Missy does just the TV, so to have her in there and have the whole crew, um, you know it's it's. Uh, I mean I'm blessed to have a job. It's 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 an awesome job, and uh, I I'm happy to be underway. Absolutely. Yeah. We were, uh, you know, watching from the press box, just as you guys were um, 18, 10 win for the Steelers over the Falcons to kick off this season. And and it's kind of a tale of two storylines there. I mean, you're, you're pleased if you're a Steelers fan that you get out of stadium with a W right. and, and after a week that you were in flux with the most pos- important position on the field, but also you take a step back and, you know, all this chatter about, Who's going to score the first touchdown of the Steelers season in 2024? Well, the proverbial pot rolls over from week one to week two because nobody has has done it yet. Um, what, what do you make of the the struggles there, Rob? And what do you think this team needs to do offensively to to try to you know punch one in? And, and does it change based on who's under center for that? Yeah, I mean, I'm not overly concerned by that, Brian. I mean, I know a lot of people get get worked up about it. You know, I just like it felt. Um, it felt better watching the game. It felt more like we were watching an offense that was laying down, to me, laying down a foundation, hopefully for success in the future. I never really got that feeling over the last couple of years. It never really felt like one thing was leading to another. I think, for example, in the second half, you know, I was asked uh, yesterday in the radio, what, what is my takeaway from the game? My takeaway from the game is the second half. The defense completely dominated the Falcons and a Falcons offense that expects to be much, much better this year. Um, You know, you keep in mind that Arthur Smith had, when he was the coach down there, he had a quarterback who is not in the NFL right now. That's who his quarterback was. And they went seven and 10. So if you're the Falcons, you think, okay, well, we have all these high draft picks. We've got a really good offensive line. If we take a four-time Pro Bowler and put him in here, it's bound to make our offense better. Well, the Steelers got adjusted to what the Rams were doing quickly and completely shut them down in the second half. So I was really impressed. I thought the new additions on defense are great. Offensively, I thought their best drive was the one that stalled, um, the one that they went for it on fourth and one. And that's later in the game. And I think that's hopefully what we're going to see, Brian, is a, an offense that's better in the second half than they are in the first half because, you know, to use a boxing analogy, they're trying to land body blows early on hoping that it's going to weaken their opponent later in the game. I think that's what I – I saw two things. One, Justin Fields getting more comfortable. And two, the effect of the running game starting to pay some dividends, I thought, in the second half. So, And and then Mike Tomlin's always coached to the game. You know, he doesn't coach to the scoreboard. He doesn't coach to a flip card in front of him saying, go for it. You know, if the wind's coming from the southeast and you have the ball to 41 and it's, uh, you know, it's fourth and a yard and a half, you go for it. You know, he, he he plays the game, and I think they did what they needed to do. Let Chris Boswell kick field goals. Don't try to do anything crazy. Don't turn the ball over. Let them turn the ball over. Let your defense do the job and win the game, and that's what they did. And, and remember, too, people forget, 
they were a three and a half point underdog in this game and they won yeah. it by eight. So I, I don't see, I understand where people want to see more, but I think that they, I saw plenty. I saw a victory over a team that was favored by you over you by three and a half and you won by eight. Yeah. And Justin Fields, if, if you could see the jitters for a player, mm -hmm. I almost feel like they were coming off of them on that first series. I mean, it was yep. it was loud in there. I mean, there was a ton of Steelers fans, but I think whatever amount of juice the Falcons faithful had in them, they were kind of letting loose on it for that first possession uh, for Fields. And yeah, I mean, you, you get the, the the dropped snap and then the miss to Van Jefferson. And I give him credit, Rob, for that. You know, after the, the, the post game, he's like, look, that's on me. I can't have that. And it won't happen again. So, I mean, hey, for what it's worth, uh, he, he's approaching that the right way. And I'm glad you brought up, um, you know, the, the just kind of the flow of the game from Mike Tomlin, because I thought Arthur Smith had a good feel for the flow of the game, too. And while it would be easy to see from the outside, the box score doesn't look pretty. And yeah, I mean, you settle for six field goals. You might think the offensive coordinator had a rough day at the office and it wasn't all smooth. But, you know, dialing up that that one deep ball there in, in the second half where I just felt being in the stadium, I was like, OK, there's kind of a long timeout, like there was some sort of lull. And then all of a sudden, I mean, he just, boom, calls the play action and, and Fields hits George Pickens for one of their big plays. You have to think human nature, there's a little bit of a weight off of him. Even though he said all the right things about going back to Atlanta, you have to think, all right, we got through that game. I, I, I beat my former team, even if he wasn't, you know, had any, having any ax to grind. You've got that out of the way. Now, OK, on to week two and, and beyond. And he can kind of get deeper into that playbook maybe and uh, get a better feel for the personnel that he has. He didn't have Jalen Warren. Didn't have the quarterback he expected to have out there. Um, and and I, I'm glad you brought up that play, Brian, because that was a great play. You know, he's uh, Fields is rolling left, and I'm like, what? what what's, what's the end game here? What are they doing here? And then he throws it back across the field on a rocket. I mean, just that was probably his best throw of the game. And it got you an important field goal. Right, you're getting the ball to begin the second half, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, hey, we're 10-9, no big deal. Um, I, I thought that was an important uh, conversion for the Steelers. I do think um, that Arthur Smith has is, is got to feel pretty good about winning that game. I mean, as he said going into the week, it's it's amazing, right? That, oh, hey, it, we just happened to have the Falcons and Steelers in week one, the coordinator going back to the team that he coached. And, you know, the other thing that, that was heartening for me was to see the quotes of the Falcons players. They they seemed to really, really like playing for Arthur Smith and really wished him well. Um, you know, before the game, hey, loved playing for him. Uh, he was a really good guy and really good coach. And and so that's got to feel gratifying as well to hear those comments and then to go on the road and, and win. Um, and again, offensively, you know, you did enough to win the game. Um, when your defense is rolling like that, it, it doesn't matter. Now, at some point, as we know, at some point, you're going to have to score 30 points, right? You're not going to win every game 18 to 10. No matter how good your defense is, other teams are too good. But for this game, it was plenty. And I didn't see any reason to risk turnovers. I you have, you know, I saw reasons to kick field goals, but frankly. And um, and that's what they did, and, and they wound up winning the game. And I, I think we're going to see better. And we'll see Jalen Warren healthy. That's going to make a big difference. I, I think we're going to see some things with this offense. I think it's a good platform from which to build. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that play to, um, yeah, to to steal those three points uh, right before yeah. the end of the, the the half there was was huge. And I think too, like Justin Fields, he's kind of got that cool composure about him. And you know, when you see him on the field in interviews, but I have to imagine after the way things went with the Bears probably doesn't hurt to build that confidence back up. And it, and it might come a little bit slowly. Uh, you know, maybe there will be a jolt from from winning this game in his hometown. But, yeah, I mean, I think it was kind of a delicate situation there for him, just having been thrown in there, what, middle of practice Thursday. Now all of a sudden you've got to flip your whole mindset, even though he said his mentality on Friday was that he always prepares as if he's the starter. Well, preparing as if you're the starter and actually being the starter are – Two pretty different things. And, and he was sort of walking on eggshells there uh, throughout the, the latter portion of that week. So, yeah, I mean, I think that was an interesting balance for Arthur Smith to strike there. Of, hey, go be you. Use your legs. Let's just find a way to get out of the stadium, as Mike Tomlin says. And then we can we can all sort of take a collective breath, uh, you know, Sunday at 4.15 p.m. if we get a win. 
and we'll figure it out from there. So speaking of the figuring it out from there, do you have any sort of feeling or sense of who's going to be there? I mean, and we're going to hear from Mike Tomlin in a couple hours here, Rob, on the South yeah. side. I mean, what do you make of the the quarterback situation at, at this point? And, you know, as much as an Arthur Smith revenge game was tantalizing for week one, would have been even more so if the NFL decided, uh, let's line up Steelers Broncos to kick off the 2024 season. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that decision. And, and again, I think you're right about Justin Fields. And I think, you know, we didn't see a lot of quarterback power plays, which I think, you know, quarterback leads where he's just going to clearly get the ball, run behind blockers. They did it late in the game in that drive that that uh, stalled yeah. um, on the fourth down. I think that's something that Justin Fields can bring to the table. And also one one other final thing, a lot of people making um, a lot of the ball not being thrown over the middle of the field. Well, I think that my guess is that the Steelers still view Justin Fields as a person that they're that's not a finished product, they're trying to. They're trying, like you said, to bring the confidence up, uh, make sure the footwork and all the technique things are good. We know he can run. We know he's an elite runner. We know he's got elite arm strength. But the, some of the footwork or other things, can you bring those along? Well, who's in the middle of the field for the Falcons? Jesse Bates, a pro bowler who led the league in interceptions with six. Justin Simmons, another pro bowler who has more interceptions uh, from 2017 to the present than any other player in the NFL – why would you want to test the middle of the field? I, so um, I'm okay with that. Again, you can't make a living, I don't think, scoring 18 points every week. And I don't think you can make a living never testing the middle of the field. But that having been said, I just wanted to wrap that up with, with uh, fields. I don't know who's going to play. I think that the Russell Wilson, um, you know, him getting an opportunity out there would be interesting. I think that, um, I, I don't know which way they're going to go. I mean, I think if it was, if the Steelers were 4-0 and and Justin Fields had quarterback, I think it would be a pretty easy decision. You just keep riding Justin Fields. Um, but, you know, you're four days removed from Russell Wilson being your starter. So we'll see. Um, but hey, it wouldn't be the first time I'd be surprised by a move. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, and, I, and I think they put themselves in an interesting spot at the quarterback position, right? So uh, we'll see. It's going to be, you know, uh, but, but Russell Wilson playing in Denver, would be a lot of fun for a coach that benched him. Yeah. I mean, it was an ignominious ending to say the least for him in Denver. So, yeah. uh, and you know, a lot of people are questioning whether that's derailed, you know, has that possibly derailed his trip to Canton? I mean, I don't think so, but I mean, you know, uh, a, a good solid year quarterbacking a team to the playoffs uh, is going to, you know, cement your status. I think um, there's a lot of things for Russell Wilson to play for. And I think a winning a win in Denver is definitely one of them. And it's it's interesting though because it's kind of there's two sides of the coin there to that logic. I mean, on one hand, yes, he's got to be champing at the bit to to beat the team that, yeah. I mean, it kind of just dump, dumped him on the side of the road and and kept driving. Um, but it, it, on the flip side of that, if he's not a hundred percent right, then you're potentially putting yourself out there, and you know you might be risking a, a, a poor performance against that team who you wouldn't want to do that against more than probably anybody else in the league right now. So, I mean, it, it could be similar to the tail end of, of last week where it's kind of very much a fluid situation of how he's feeling, how the docs are, are kind of reporting to Mike Tomlin what it's looking like. And, you know, I don't know if we're going to get clarity in a couple hours or if we're going right. to be taking this into late Saturday night again. Uh, Sunday morning before, or I guess it'll be afternoon there uh, when inactives come out. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, at least, you know, you, you see Mike Tomlin framing it as it's it's a good problem to have sort of that we've got two guys we feel comfortable with and he can just go by, all right, who's given us the best chance to win uh, with what we know of, of both right now. And yeah, I, I wouldn't say Fields up and seized the job, no looking back with the way he played Sunday. But yes, I think he did enough to build on and, you know, make it so that Mike Tomlin is not caught between a rock and a hard place. I, I did want to point out, uh, actually, I think now that I, jo you know, jostled my memory a little bit, the play I was talking about was the 40-yard completion to Pickens. Uh, oh. I think it was end of the third quarter. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, late in the third quarter where, yeah, there was like a penalty on the Falcons and one of those long, you know, media timeouts for you right. pros in the booth. And, and uh, you know, the, the air was kind of coming out of 
Mercedes-Benz Stadium a little bit. And uh, yeah, I thought that was a good one to dial up for Arthur Smith. All right, we've talked a lot about the offense. Defensively, Rob, before we get out of here, uh, you know, latest move that hasn't been officially announced by the Steelers, but by all indications, it's coming. Terrell Edmonds, former first round pick, coming back to town to, to join this safety room. What do you make of that signing? You know, good depth and obviously a guy who's been around and probably somebody they're comfortable with both, uh, you know, in the the defense if they need him in some way and on special teams too. Yeah, I think both, right? I think he can contribute in both. And, um, you know, they're, uh, the, the Cam Johnston injury uh, yeah. to me, it was such a big injury. You know, when you go in and you're hoping that this dynamic kickoff is going to lead to kick returns, you've got the greatest kick returner in NFL history. Um, and Jalen Warren back there, uh, just watching balls sail over their head. So hopefully, yeah. I, I hope they'll amend the rule and, and try to get back to more kickoff returns. But between those two and Cam Johnston, I thought that the Steelers went into this season with the best special teams I can remember in quite some time. You know, just to try in an attempt to try to quantify what a punter can mean to a team, what Cam Johnston could mean versus Presley Harvin. I looked at their average net. Um, and again, you have different coverage units, but I just tried to make it simple. Average net, um, how many times did you punt a game? And 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 what is the difference in yards per game? And it was 25 yards per game. And Brian, if you describe that from the from the kicking game to the offense, let's just say you added that 25 yards to the offense. The Steelers offense would have gone from 25th to 19th last year. Six spots moving up by changing your punter. That's how significant Cam Johnson could be. Um, really well liked, good guy too. So that's a yeah, big that, that was deflating to see too. And it also like yeah. I don't know. I, I guess this isn't really like, but I mean, I just feel like you know most of the positions on a football field, you go into a game knowing I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get hit hard. Injury rate of of this sport is 100. percent When it happens to the punter, it's almost just kind of like really. I mean, and especially that's one of the most vulnerable positions anybody can be Absolutely. in on a football field where your right leg or left leg is fully extended like that that just that was tough to see for a guy who yeah he's very low-key in the locker room keeps a low profile he's got a young kid and uh you hate to see his 2024 season go down in flames in week one yeah it's awful and and it takes what to me was had become an advantage for the Steelers you know yeah. they made a lot of great additions in the offseason I love the Sean Elliott as a player always have I think he's gonna have an effect on Minka Fitzpatrick Patrick Queen we know Dante Jackson with the speed now uh getting to sort of play on the other side of Joey Porter Jr. Um, I really at Peyton Wilson at the middle linebacker position. I like what they did defensively. Um, I thought they made a lot of good additions. You know, they've they've obviously changed over the quarterback position um, and and added some significance there. But I really thought the special teams was going to be a huge advantage for them this year. And now we'll see um, if Corliss Waitman um, can provide that kind of difference for the Steelers. As for Edmonds, I think he's going to. You know, he's a he's a He's hopefully going to be a good quality depth piece and special teamer. Um, that's the one part. Uh, that's what made me think about it. The one part I think they're still probably sifting through is they lost both their gunners from a year ago. Um, they did give up one one good punt return. Um, I'm sure Danny Smith's not going to want any good punt returns. Uh, so that's he's a guy I think that can add in in those categories and just anything you can add to that defense that was just dominant. Um, that second half was a dominating performance um I, I think that uh I, you know that's a, an offense that's expected to be vastly improved and the Steelers just completely shut them down in the second half yeah, and as far as the safety backups go I think the Steelers also liked what they were getting out of rookie sixth rounder Ryan Watts right in training camp and then of course you know scary injury to him in the third preseason game and he's out for the year so maybe right. Edmund signings the other shoot to drop there as well so well, I think that's uh, all we've got for today, Rob. Uh, thanks to everybody for checking us out again on the Chip Tam and Football Show from the Post. Are you a Wedding Crashers guy? No. Oh, Do I need to be? Yeah, yeah. That's the old. Uh, they, they have a line in their crab cakes and football. That's what Maryland does. So oh, okay, all right. Um, that's that's where we take our uh, our show title from. I like it. Thank you, thank you. And yes, as always. Uh, the podcast brought to you by Pella and Goldberg, Persky, and White. If you're diagnosed with mesothelioma or lung cancer, call your local attorneys at Goldberg, Persky, and White. For over 40 years, their firms represented thousands of lung cancer and mesothelioma victims. Call 1-800-COMPLEX or visit gpwlaw.com for a free consultation. Rob, thanks so much, man. This was fun. Appreciate you coming on as 
Uh, we rotate through guests throughout uh, every season. And I will either see you at the facility this week or see you out in, in Denver in the Mile High City. All right. Both, I would expect. Brian, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Sure thing. For Rob King, I'm Brian Badko. I appreciate you checking us out here on the Post Gazette's Podcast Network. We'll be back with plenty of shows throughout the week and stay tuned for our coverage of Mike Tomlin's Tuesday press conference coming up at noon. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.